Now that you've decided to get into the haymaking business, your first step is to decide which type of crop to grow. Unfortunately, there isn't a one type fits all crop that fits everyone's needs. Different animals have different nutritional requirements, and certain crops are best suited for certain climates. Start by doing some research to see which crops make the most sense for your needs. This here is pure brome grass is what it is. Horses definitely love this type of hay. It's just a pure type of grass. Um, you would feed this to calves that you, if you weaned off the cows, so they would not uh, eat, overeat. They could eat pretty much as they wanted this and it would not hurt them, would not blow it inside of them. Uh, because there's no legumes in it at all, it's just a pure grass. Okay, this here is pretty much pure alfalfa. As you can see, it's it's got a stem on it, and there's leaves on the stem. If you get it baled up right, you'll save all these leaves. Um, you got to have it at the right moisture. You can't bale it too wet because it will also mold. And you can't bale it too dry, you'll lose these leaves. As you can see, they'll rattle a little bit off, but not too bad. But the drier they get, the more they'll rattle off. Most of the time, you'll see alfalfa mixed in with a grass mixture. There's one stem right there, and you can see the leaves on it. And there's where your nutrients are, is in them leaves. If you're planning on feeding your hay to your own livestock, or marketing your hay for a certain type of livestock, you'll need to determine their nutritional requirements. This chart in the workbook is a good place to start. It gives you an overview of the energy requirements for some of the most common types of livestock. You should also consult with your veterinarian or local animal nutritionist for more specifics on requirements. The average thousand pound horse will eat 25 to 30 pounds of feed a day. And uh, if you're talking hay, that's a great, that's a, a lot of hay, that's a half bale of hay. The horse's digestive system is very different from a ruminant's digestive system, such as a cow. In cattle, being ruminants, they have a compartmented stomach. Four compartments, the biggest compartment is the rumen, and the rumen is full of microbes, bacteria, and protozoa. So when you feed a cow, the, the feed is actually digested by the microbes. It's called fermentation or microbial digestion. In the horse, on the other hand, it's a simple stomach, only one compartment. It's pretty small, and it only has digestive enzymes and hydrochloric acid. So when you feed a horse, the feed is broken down by the enzymes and acids. Then in both animals, the next part of the gut is the small intestine. The small intestine is just a tube, and there's more digestion going on, and the big part of the small intestine is it's the major site of nutrient absorption. Fiber is only digested by microbes. So in a cow, the fiber is digested in the upper gut, in the stomach, and in the horse, the fiber is digested in the hindgut, in the cecum. Where that runs us into problem is that the fiber is located in the cell wall. And the more fiber, especially the more indigestible fibers in the cell wall, the less digestion happens in the upper gut. So the protein that's inside the cell and some of the vitamins and minerals inside the cell don't get digested into the upper gut and so basically are wasted to the horse. Horses like to have grass. They don't want a lot of alfalfa, maybe a little, but not much. They're mostly a grass animal. They, they like brome and timothy. Uh, your dairy cows, pure alfalfa for production. Sheep, uh, you can have a grass, alfalfa, grass mix, maybe a little clover in it, uh, but it's not necessary. Before you run out and buy countless bags of seed, take a look at what's already growing in your pasture. It may make sense to just add or interseed crops that complement the existing crops rather than starting from scratch. This is where talking with your local extension agent or even some of your neighbors can make a big difference in the success of your hay operation. They'll be able to suggest varieties that work well with your climate and soil conditions.